everyone. I'm Jenna with Stalls TV, and welcome back to our live broadcast, Making It Together Home Edition. I have a really exciting topic planned for you today, but I do have one announcement, and that is that I'm super excited to be going live with Impressions Group for the first time um, for their social takeover that we're doing. So we paired up with them um, and their team to kind of, uh, you know, go back and forth with social. So we'll be posting on their Facebook page today until 2 p.m. And we'll be doing this uh, for the remainder of the month. So every Monday, this is where the uh, Making It Together Home Edition is going to be playing out on the Stalls All Things Heat Printing page, the Stalls TV YouTube channel, and of course, Impressions Group. So if you're not familiar with Impressions Group, head over to their Facebook page, give them a like and a follow, and that's where you can be joining these live broadcasts and see some of the things that we're gonna be posting and sharing content onto their Facebook page, right? So um, with that being said, we're really excited and we're gonna go ahead and dive into today's topic. So I don't take up too much of your morning um, because it, it's pretty lengthy. We're gonna be talking about how you can upgrade um, or when you should upgrade from a home iron to a heat press and what type of heat press you should really be looking for. So if you're just dabbling into crafting and uh, with heat transfer vinyl specifically, and you're using your home iron to uh, iron on designs with um, your home iron, then it's probably the best fit for you right now. Now, if you haven't asked yourself yet, when you should upgrade to a heat press, I promise you it's going to come. The more you get involved with heat transfer vinyl and you're making designs for your friends and family, the more you're gonna realize how much you can actually profit from decorating apparel and hoodies and sweatpants and t-shirts, all those really popular types of apparel, right? They do very well in the industry and they're super easy to decorate if you have a craft cutter at home and you're cutting out heat transfer vinyl design. So this style of desktop vinyl cutter is a Cricut, but there's a variety of different desktop cutters out there. So Silhouette is a really well-known brand as well as um, Brothers Scan and Cut and the GCC iCraft. So there's a variety of desktop cutters that are completely compatible with all of our CAD cut heat transfer vinyl and really any type of heat transfer vinyl out in the market. And the easiest way to really get started with that is whenever you're cutting out heat transfer vinyl designs is to just take a home iron because you typically already have one there and it's not an initial investment that you have to make in addition to your vinyl cutter. However, whenever you're ready to start selling and profiting from this hobby that you have started because you purchased a desktop cutter, then you need to start considering your quality of the product that you're selling and the speed, the amount of time it's taking you uh, to make these products. Especially if you start getting into larger groups such as dance schools, maybe you're doing spirit wear for a local school, or maybe you're just putting a logo on for a local business, and that's fine, but you also wanna make sure you are maximizing the amount of time you're spending in production because when you work with heat transfer vinyl, we know there's a cutting process, there's a weeding process, and that can take up a decent amount of time. So we don't wanna to spend too much time having to iron on those designs. So we need to speed up the process with a heat press, right? Whenever we're starting to consider taking our hobby into a legitimate business and making money from the projects that we're making now. All right, I see a lot of comments coming in. I wanna say good morning to everyone and I appreciate you commenting in. I would love for these to be super interactive, so feel free to comment uh, throughout the broadcast with any questions that you have. Of course, I will always um, be visiting the comments to make sure I'm getting any of those questions answered. All right, so I also do have uh, some team members behind me that will be answering some questions for you as well. Uh, so if I don't get to that, one of your questions, somebody will. All right, so uh, back to the topic here. So we're talking about ironing on designs and why it's important to eventually upgrade to a heat press. And that's because every heat transfer that you work with is always going to have a recipe. All right, so you can see here, and I'm pointing out silicone dye block because that's actually the first application we're gonna be doing. This is a really popular heat transfer vinyl, entered the market probably a couple years back, and it is um, a rubbery 
dimensional finish. And it's something that is very similar to what Nike and Under Armour are currently using to put their logos on their garments, all right? So it mimics the look of that silicone raised dimensional effect. And um, that's exactly what it is. It's a silicone heat transfer vinyl. And we're gonna be applying that as we talk about the importance of what your heat press should accomplish for you if you're looking to upgrade. There are many heat presses out there um, you'll find a lot on Amazon, I'm sure, um, that are all a fairly decent price point when you're looking to enter in um, to the industry and not have a high investment cost, all right? So those will range anywhere from $250, upwards of $400, depending on the price that you go with. Unfortunately, some of the presses uh, on Amazon are being imported from China um, they have very thin ele heating elements, which end up curving because they can't withstand all the high heat that it takes to apply multiple heat transfer vinyls and transfers across the board. Um, in addition to that, some of them don't have a pressure knob that is in the center of the upper heating element, which is very important to ensure you're getting the right amount of pressure. Um, for your transfers because like I said, every heat transfer vinyl is going to have a recipe that calls out a certain time, a certain temperature and a specific pressure so that that adhesive on the back of the heat transfer vinyl is getting the right um, time, temperature and pressure it needs to cure accurately on that apparel and withstand a wash cycle. Okay, wash cycles, um, we always recommend care instructions. So typically it's thrown in the washer. That's really all we need to worry about. We don't really recommend them going through the drying process. So it's usually hang dry, wash cold, but that lasts you the life of the garment. All right, so all of our heat transfer vinyl designs are, or heat transfer vinyls in general are tested for 50 washes. Those 50 washes are technically the life of the garment at that point. Um, and they're not gonna fall off in the wash as long as you're following these instructions, right? So why is that important? Well, reason being, you wanna make sure you're selling a quality product. You don't want a customer coming back and asking you, uh, why did this fall off of my garment? I want my money back or fix this and spend more time on an order you already completed for fixing a mistake that happened. In addition to that, your home iron, uh, not only are those uh, presses from China not going to be the greatest option for you, you can't accurately get a good pressure with your iron. Because if I'm placing a design down on my table, I'm having to put all of my upper pressure on this iron, assuming I'm even getting the right pressure without actually even knowing. All right, so you can see how that could be a problem if you're using a home iron especially if you want to sell the design. So I don't want you to take me wrong. I think that it is a great option to get started with an iron if you're fairly new to heat transfer vinyl and you're just kind of crafting and making things for yourself or your family and friends, no big deal. But if you're going to start selling your products, you need to ensure you have quality products that you're selling and a heat press is going to ensure that you're getting the quality you need by following those application instructions, all right? Which is the recipe that I was pointing out earlier with our silicone dye block, all right? So let's go ahead and dive into an application so you can see exactly the importance of that time, temperature, and pressure, okay? All right, so this is the heat press that I have been using throughout the uh, duration of these live broadcasts from home. And what it does is it's giving me a time readout and it's gonna let me know when my time is up and it's gonna beep for me to let me know. All right, so you guys can hear that beep. That gives me the exact information I need knowing I get the temperature at the, at the right temperature and then the time and the dwell time it needs with the accurate pressure as well. So as I mentioned earlier, the pressure knob needs to be center of your platen. So when you're considering a heat press and you're thinking through all these things, these are some things you wanna look out for. First, I have my temperature readout. I'm applying silicone at 280 degrees. So I have this set to 280, which is giving me that accurate um, temperature readout. 
if you are concerned on whether your heat press is getting the accurate temperature, which is another thing you need to be careful of, is if my temperature is even getting to the temp that I needed to be to apply accurately. They can give me a readout and say that it's there, but it could be not accurate in the center because there have been times where the wire that's connected to the heating element is reading the direct center of that heating element and what it's heated up to in the center, but it might not be getting that same temperature on the edges of the platen because the coils aren't evenly aligned throughout that heating element, all right? So I always recommend um, if you do have a heat press right now, maybe you're even considering an upgrade from that right now and not necessarily a home iron, uh, take a heat gun and put it in different um, areas of the heating element, all right? If you are not getting an accurate heat across the entire upper platen, then that right there shows you that you are not getting even heat across the board and you're gonna end up with cold spots and parts of a design that aren't even applying. So definitely think about that. Uh, but the coils in this press are aligned evenly. They're snitched throughout so that we're getting even heat across that heating element. So I know my 280 degree readout is accurate. In addition to that, I'm able to adjust my temperature by using the plus and minus buttons. And when I hit mode one more time, I'm also able to adjust my time, all right? so. Temperature and time readouts are very um, important and not something that you can get with a heat press at this time, or, or not with a heat press, with a home iron, you can't get with that. Um, in addition to that, the pressure. So the pressure, this is the knob that adjusts light and heavy pressure. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, um, the one you go to the right, it's going to increase the pressure for you and it's evenly dropping that down and applying the pressure from the center out. You'll come across some heat presses in the market that have a pressure knob in the back, which means all the pressure is going in the back of the clam shell platen, and then it's applying all the pressure in the back and none in the front. So you wanna make sure you have an over the center pressure that's gonna get you that accurate pressure. All right, so let's go ahead and heat apply so you can see the importance of each of this. So this is another thing, and this is why I'm doing a performance fabric first, because if you, I don't know if some of you on um, what type of home irons you have. This one, for example, gives me numbers from one to six, and then it just has little dots, and then it goes to the off button, all right? With that being said, I don't know what temperature I'm at when I'm at a two versus a six. If I'm working with a performance fabric, which can scorch very, very easily, I need to make sure I'm at the lowest temperature setting that I can get for that adhesive to still cure. I know my heat press is gonna get exactly to 280 degrees and be able to apply my performance heat transfer vinyl without compromising the finish of the garment. All right, so this garment is specifically from Sanmar. It is a Sport Tech um, t-shirt and it is 100% polyester. All right, so I'm just laying this right on my platen. This is a nine by 12 heat press and it is um, a really great press, really. Just because you are limited to the nine by 12 dimensions isn't going to keep you um, from getting in a, a, a decent full front design. You, typically a nine by 12 is the standard anyway for a full front. Um, but when you get into a full back, that's whenever um, designs start to get a little bit larger. And you may wanna consider if you're gonna be doing a lot of placements like that, that you want to um, upgrade to even a larger press. So the dimensions of this heat press specifically are nine by 12. And my silicone is applying for a full 10 seconds on here. And this is a cold peel. So I am going to make sure that this cools down before I peel that carrier back. Now this is a fairly large design. So if I was using a home iron here, uh, so this is another key consideration if you're kind of on the fence of whether you're ready to upgrade to a heat press from a home iron is if your designs are getting fairly large. It only took me 10 seconds to apply this with a heat press, but if I were using a home iron, I'd have to probably hit it 
three separate times, making that a full 30 seconds. In addition to that, um, I would have to cover it again with a craft paper or cover sheet, maybe a Teflon even, and I would have to go over it once more with the iron. Once this is hit once and I wait for this to cool, that's all that it is. It's 280 degrees for 10 to 12 seconds. At that point, I let the material cool. I peel back that carrier and it's done. I don't have to worry about covering again and then hitting it a second time, right? So that's another thing to consider. And that is why I mentioned earlier the amount of time that you're spending applying your designs with a home iron. So that is a great example of when you should start considering an upgrade, all right? So this is the sky blue silicone, and this was applied simply by just laying it right on the heat press, and we have a nice durable finish. We don't have to worry about this peeling off in the wash or anything. So a very nice premium look and feel. So ultimately, whenever you are considering the upgrade, you're also gonna be able to offer more premium finishes. I'm going to start increasing the temperature of my heat press because the other designs we're gonna be heat applying apply at a fairly high pressure or high temperature. All right, so the last application we're actually gonna be doing is um, Transfer Express's goof proof transfer. Great. So I need to make sure that I'm getting up to 365 by the end of this. All right, so before we move on, we just did our first application, talked about the importance of time, temperature, and pressure. Whenever you're considering a heat press, those readouts are going to really, really help you there. All right, so um, Sharon says, I purchased the pink press for my daughter to get started. The main reason is because it's a hot tronics. I love my fusion and will upgrade her eventually. Yeah, so first, Time getting started, a low end heat press is gonna be great so that you can kind of learn the ins and outs of heat pressing and the importance of it and then consider upgrading even from then. But this is a great starter heat press. All right. Looks like you guys are pretty much answering each other's questions. So I appreciate that. All right, so lots of good comments. All right, keep commenting in. All right, so that was the silicone application. The next application we're gonna be doing is a two color application because when you're working with a home iron currently, it takes a ton of time to be able to apply multiple colors. And we're going to be applying a two color glitter flake design. And we can really speed up this process with a heat press using something called a tacking method. It isn't necessarily recommended with a home iron is doing the tacking method because you're not ensuring you're getting the accurate pressure for a two to three second tack. Um, so let's go ahead and walk through that process so that you can see a little bit more about what I'm talking about here. So anytime uh, we're working with multiple designs and heat transfer, or multiple colors in heat transfer vinyl, uh, one thing you wanna consider is um, the tacking method because it can really speed up the production process if you are doing multiple designs. This specific design was intended for a dance team, right? So that means I'm doing anywhere from 12 to maybe 24 of these, right? So heat transfer vinyl is the way I wanted to go because of the effect that it has, that true glitter finish that really pops off of the garment. So I didn't want to outsource at a transfer to this point where it just has both colors on there already for me. So I'm going to have to apply both of these at a separate time, but that tacking method is going to ensure that I can get um, both applied durably, but also save me some time in production. So I'm applying to a posi charge garment from Sanmar. And this I believe is another sport tech brand. Yeah, that is sport tech. And it is a um, cotton poly blend, all right? So it's gonna apply just fine. Right now I'm at 330 degrees, which is okay. I'm still working to get to that 365 I need to be to apply my screen for transfer later. Um, but this is going to, you know, apply typically at 302 degrees. So I went ahead and tacked the glitter flake 
because I was talking, I let it sit there a little bit longer, but Glitter Flake is one of those products, if you follow um, our videos a lot, you can do that two to three second tack. So um, I'm going to apply the second application for the full time, but I saved myself some time by just being able to tack the first layer of Glitter Flake for a few seconds and now I can lay this in, thus increasing my time spent at the heat press. All right, so again, comparing this to how much time it would take you with a home iron, it would just take too much time, especially if you're doing a variety of these um, hoodies for a dance team, right? If it was just a one-off and you're just making it for a friend or family, no big deal, really if you're using a home iron. It's when you start getting into larger runs that you need to spend more time uh, applying things that a heat press is really gonna come in handy, especially if you start getting into two color. Right, so I can go ahead and remove this carrier. Glitter Flake is a hot peel and my design is complete. All right, so again, being able to utilize the tacking method with these products is huge and not something you can necessarily do with a home iron because you're just not sure you're getting the right amount of time, the right amount of pressure. Um, temperature is pretty easy if you're using the iron that has the temperature knob. Mine does not, which I showed you earlier, so that would really save you. All right, so on to the next project is adhesive and foil. And I've heard time and time again how many um, errors there have been from people that are using a home iron to apply this particular product, where foil seems to be coming off a lot easier in the wash cycle because um, it's harder to follow the intricate instructions for these style for this particular style. Um, and you really just kind of need a heat press to be able to get it accurately so that you're getting that quality finish that you need. So we're going to be applying an adhesive and a foil type of transfer. And I have my foil laying over here. So we're gonna be using that iridescent foil. I'm gonna get my scissors to trim the design up for me. Or not the design, but the dimensions of the design. And if you're not familiar with this product, this is a very popular product in retail, those high shine, metallic and foil like finishes. So the first product that we're gonna be heat applying to be able to get this to adhere accurately is the adhesive. This adhesive just works like any other heat transfer vinyl out there. It comes in a roll or sheets and you can load that onto your craft cutter or maybe you're working with a larger cutter. You can feed that roll right through and you cut it out in a mirror design, weed away the excess material. Um, so just works like any other heat transfer vinyl. However, when you're working with this product, there are two steps because we need to get the foil to adhere to the adhesive. So we'll show you what that process looks like now so you can see. Looks like I have a tag in here still. There we go. All right, this tank top is sourced from Pennant Sportswear for anybody curious or interested in working with it. And we are working with a 100% cotton. And I believe this is a ring spun cotton because it's very soft. And that's one of the best practices we recommend with um, adhesive and foil is working with a very smooth type of substrate. Okay, so the adhesive, whenever you're following the recipe or the application instructions for this, it applies at a very, very light pressure. So it shouldn't take very much for me to be able to lock this down. So I can actually probably dial that back a little bit more. This one's gonna apply for just five seconds. So just place that right on there. As you can see, all of my designs have been fitting the dimension of this heat press, but don't let that scare you from being able to do larger designs as well, because it's not gonna hurt if I needed to move this back and press down here after I applied the first press, all right? So larger designs can definitely be utilized here. It will take more time. So if you consider um, the size, the typical size of your designs, it will fit on a nine by 12. If you happen to get in larger designs, 
um, you can still apply those by just doing a double hit at the heat press. All right, so the adhesive, that is a hot pill. So to reiterate, adhesive applies at a light pressure and a very, very light pressure, and it is a hot peel, and it only applies for five seconds. When I go to apply the foil, it's gonna be a little bit different. Both are applying at 300 degrees, so I don't have to adjust my pressure at all, or my temperature at all, but I do need to adjust my pressure, right? So you can see how this could be difficult with a home iron, being able to tell if I'm at a light pressure versus a heavy pressure, if I am trying to use my upper body weight to apply these. So this is gonna be a really firm pressure. So I'm going to turn my knob two times. And I'm also going to be using a cover sheet for this because foil likes to um, kind of get like a static cling to the upper heating element. It is a cold peel, so I need to make sure that doesn't happen. So this cover sheet here is gonna keep that from happening for me. All right, so nice firm pressure. It was a little bit harder to lock down. This is allowing the foil to adhere to that double-sided adhesive is what I like to call it because it's just a translucent heat transfer vinyl that has adhesive on the top for foil, fabric, different things for you to be able to adhere to it. Like I said, this is a cold peel. So I'm just going to let this cool and then you peel the foil back. All right, so Janet says she loves foil. Yeah, foil is really, really fun to work with. And it just offers such a unique finish. All right, so now that this is cooled down, I can go ahead and peel that back. You can actually see my error there. I missed the top of the adhesive up there with the foil sheet. Now, it wouldn't be a problem for me to cut another piece of foil and lay it up there and hit it one more time. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do that since we've already reached a half hour here. But this, you'll still, you still get the effect. The foil is a really cool finish. Uh, it can be hard to see, which is why I missed the top line there. But overall, a really cool effect that isn't easy to achieve with an iron, especially if you're compromising the durability of it. Now, I have heard um, some feedback from customers that. You know, just because uh, a heat press can adhere, uh, will help heat transfer vinyl to adhere more durably on apparel, I work with accessories, and accessories I need to be able to get into small places. But heat presses can do accessories as well because we offer all the items you need to be able to do accessories on a heat press and be able to do it durably. In addition to that, heat presses are great for some of the heat transfer vinyls or just heat transfers out there that you can't even adhere with an iron because the adhesive is um, needs just a stronger bonding um, from accurate heat and time and pressure. So the design or the application I'm going to be showing you is this clear tote bag. So you can see why someone would rather use an iron for this. There's plastic here that we can worry about melting if we're not isolating this accurately. But this is something that you can still do and it's going to adhere durably. The transfer that we're going to be heat applying is permatwill. So I'm holding this up to the camera so that you can see that this is a textured twill that um, has an adhesive on the back and we printed on it so that we could get a full color design, or not a full color, but multiple colors in a design in one application, right? So we sell this on um, the stalls.com site. Uh, you just upload your artwork and we send it to you ready to heat apply, right? So this is full color twill, and we're gonna apply it to this bag using some additional accessories known as a heat printing pillow and a um, flexible application pad. So I'm gonna grab those items off to the side here. This is the size heat printing pillow I'll be utilizing because I'm working with some dimension that is being added to the bag with these straps and that could cause uneven pressure, right? So um, this pillow is going to be inserted into the bag here to raise that area and allow these to drop in whenever I lock my press down. 
Now I'm going, before I load the bag on there, I'm gonna place this on the heat press first and test out my pressure because I know we just did a really firm pressure with foil and we'll probably need to dial this back because this is a really thick item. All right, there we go. So we're at a good medium pressure. So now I can insert this and just lay that right on the edge there, making sure my straps are falling off to the back of it. But what I need to be cautious about at this point is the plastic melting. Okay, so the plastic can still be put under this heating element, no problem, but we're going what we're going to be utilizing is this flexible application pad. So I'm gonna talk to you briefly about this. This flexible application pad is a thick silicone pad that you can utilize to heat apply heat sensitive items. So anything that could potentially melt like leather, faux leather that has plastic in it, plastic items like this bag here, and um, any other items like shoes. People like to add numbers with heat transfer vinyl onto shoes because it's more durable than sign vinyl. Um, and th this is a great item for that. So flexible application pad, this is going to protect the plastic from melting. All I have to do at this point because my bag is on there is place my full color twill. All right, and my pillow is going to ensure that that gets enough pressure there. And why I chose a um, logo like that is because these bags are commonly used for schools. Schools are calling for clear backpacks now. If you go to a football game and you're in a large stadium, they don't allow purses unless they're clear. So this is going to be a great profit opportunity for that style of um, accessory and um, that market. Right, so I'm covering this entire thing with this flexible application pad because I don't want to risk anything melting. One of the um, instructions with the cover sheet is increasing your time an additional 10 seconds. So since CAD Prince Twill applies at 25 seconds, I'm going to apply this for 35 seconds. So I'm going to increase my time from 10 to 35, right? And now I'm gonna go back to mode so that it's staying heated up. I'm gonna lock this down, All right? So since I added in the bag and this cover sheet, it is going to want me to dial this pressure back a little bit more. All right, so this um, can get a pretty light pressure it, this dial can scroll, screw all the way up so that you can fit really thick items. So I want you to think about all those accessories out there that you would essentially be worried about putting under heat or a heat press in general um, and maybe use a home iron instead so that you can isolate a specific area. You don't need to worry about that because we offer the accessories that you need to ensure that nothing is going to melt under high heat. The flex pad being one of them and that heat printing pillow is another that's going to ensure that we're getting a nice durable pressure throughout so that that transfer applies accurately. All right, so I can just remove this. We can see that my twill applied and now I'm just gonna remove that pillow. Making sure that these don't touch because it could start to stick together because this plastic is still very hot. So this is complete. You can see that the design applied accurately. We had no pressure issue because we're using the pillow and we used that um, flexible application pad so nothing melted. So my bag is still durable and sustainable. All right, so I can still use this and sell it. All right, this does need to cool down. So I am gonna put that pillow back in there to let it cool down so that those two pieces of plastic don't stick together. All right, and that's gonna allow that to cool without any issue. All right, so um, a lot of accessories can still be done on a heat press. Some heat, other heat presses that we offer, um, they're available on the website, whether it's on Transfer Express or stalls.com. Uh, they offer interchangeable platen. So I'm gonna share my screen with you briefly here so that you can see <clears throat>
some other heat presses on the market that a lot for interchangeable platens. All right, so this is the max press. And the reason I chose this is because I still want to speak to those of you that are, you know, still using a home iron and considering an upgrade for a heat press. The pink press is a great option if you're looking for a low cost of entry. However, there are some other heat presses on the market that we offer. They are made by Hotronics and they're known as the Max family. All right, they're a clam style heat press and they come in a variety of sizes. So you can see here is the 11 by 15. We do a 15 by 15 and we do a 16 by 20 as well. They work very similarly to the heat press. They give you those time and temperature readouts. But with these heat presses, you're able to do interchangeable platens, right? Those interchangeable platens are going to allow you to load different things on. So let's say I have that 15 by 15. I can load an 11 by 15 on there if I need to get a smaller um, area for maybe youth tees or slim fit ladies tees. I can put a six by 10 on there if I need to isolate a certain area of maybe a backpack or a drawstring bag. Um, and it also helps me with left chest placement alignment as well. So if you're considering a heat press and what is um, great in the market that's going to give you durability throughout, it's definitely the nine by 12 craft press or one of those max style presses as well. Now you can go a step up from there. Maybe this is something you'll consider later on um, because they're a little bit of a higher price point. Uh, but some of the uh, Hotronics fusion styles that come in air styles and then a clam style for the auto clam. Um, and those all give pressure readouts so you know how much PSI you are at as you're increasing or decreasing that pressure knob. All right, so it's all about what stage you're in. If you're working with a home iron now and you're ready to take your business to the next level or your hobby to the next level and start profiting from the items you're making, then this is a great entry level press in addition to those max style presses as well. All right, so going to our last application of the day, um, something that is Definitely worth trying out if you are getting into the industry and you're looking for a profitable business with these things is screen printed transfers. So earlier we talked about doing a design for a dance team and um, it having to be a two, two step application for let's say 24 hoodies. What could save you even more time is a screen print transfer um, that we offer. And this is goof proof. This is transfer expresses most popular screen print transfer. When I say screen print, it's a plastisol ink that is put onto this release paper in a mirror image that has an adhesive coating on it so that you can then apply it to your apparel. It not only makes you the screen printer essentially without the investment, but it's also going to be a great price point for you if you're getting into those larger areas. So the reason this is important is because these cannot be applied with an iron. So just another reason why a heat press is going to be more essential for you to sell more product and more variety of items. So screen print, this is sourced through Transfer Express. Before I apply this, I wanna to talk to you about how you can get started with Transfer Express. Uh, and keep in mind, I did see some comments come in in regards to the pink heat press. This is available through Transfer Express. And what, which, what Transfer Express is doing with that heat press is offering a marketing kit. That marketing kit is going to get you set up with all of their screen print transfers, whether it's Plastisol ink or the water-based ink, or even our full color digital screen print transfers known as Stretch Litho. They're going to give you a swatch ring of all the different finishes and screen print colors that you can get. Right. And then in addition to that, you get set up with easy view. So for those of you that are currently accessing SVG files and clip art through maybe Cricut or Silhouette Studio, easy view is going to be so amazing to you because they give you the clip art and the templates and layouts to be able to create art for your customers. And this idea book is going to give you an idea of what those templates and clip art look like. So thousands of layouts and clip art that you can utilize to create designs 
for your customers right there and you don't have to pay for them like you have to through Cricut. So as soon as you're set up with Transfer Express with the purchase of that pinky press or maybe the marketing kit that comes with it, you'll have access to the idea book, which is the exact um, items that you will see in Easy View Designer to be able to start designing with. All right, so let's go ahead and apply the goof proof transfer so you can see why this would be a great fit if you're starting to get into larger runs that have multiple color in it that you don't wanna have to spend time cutting, weeding, and then also heat applying. This comes ready to heat apply so you don't have to worry about the other steps. All right, so all I have to do is place this once more. I'm going to um, make sure that all those wrinkles are out by preheating. I need to test my pressure again because we did have some thick items in there. Goof proof applies at a medium to firm pressure. So that pressure to me feels great. All I have to do is take this design, place it right on there, and it's just like a screen print anchor finish. If you were to compare this to a screen printed design in retail, or maybe you know someone that does screen printing, if you put them side by side, you don't have to worry. No one's going to be able to tell the difference. This is a quality screen print that you're getting with this. It only takes four seconds to apply. I applied for 10 because I'm not paying attention. I'm talking to you. Um, but it is a hot pill once it's done. And then your custom shirt is complete for whoever you are designing for or selling product to. So it's very, very simple. Um, and you can see why this is important because not only is it going to save you time, but it's going to make perfect sense to utilize these transfers if you're getting into designs um, for jobs anywhere from 12 to 24 and up. These transfers are going to save you a ton of time because they only apply at four seconds and all you need is a heat press. Again, these don't work with a home iron, so that's why it's important for a quality heat press to be able to work with these items. All right, so we set you up with all of those transfers and designs and everything, that marketing kit, so you can test out all the different transfers that they offer. In addition to the screen print, which I always find really cool, is they do uh, full color artwork as well. So if you wanted this design here done with a pattern, they would be able to produce that just like we can too, where you upload your artwork and you just select um, express print or a full color heat transfer vinyl. They also do a screen print full color product known as Stretch Litho, which I encourage you um, to check out because it is a phenomenal product, amazing finish. It's not something that you really see on the market right now. All right, so Denise asks, what brand is this shirt? I believe, yeah, this is District. So again, sourced from Sanmar. Um, I saw a comment come in earlier that they were wondering where the bag came from. That was Wholesale Boutique, All right? So yeah, again, that's Wholesale Boutique. Not many people know about them, but those that do love it. All right, so we do have a comment coming in from YouTube. Um, love my auto plan, couldn't have managed without it even now. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, so there's a variety of heat presses that we offer. The pink press being um, the most entry level that you can get. Uh, so if you're just now getting started looking to upgrade from just applying with a home iron, this is great. In addition to the max press as well. I'm going to share my screen with you one more time so you can see where to access the craft press on Transfer Express. All right. So you can see here right on the Transfer Express website, it goes through all the details of this heat press and also more technical um, specifications here. So. Um, you can see what it takes to be able to run it, just a 110 um, dedicated, and then, you know, the pounds. So that's the other thing that I love about this heat press is that it doesn't take a lot um, to run it and use it. And if I needed this space for something else, maybe I'm just set up in the room of my house, um, I can just close this up, turn it off, there's a little switch in the back that turns it off. And all I have to do is just lock this down. It'll stay like this. I can put it under a bed, in a closet, anything like that. So even if you need a small heat press in addition to some of the other heat presses you're working with, this is a great heat press that gets your standard placements um, and easy, 
easy to port if you are working at craft fairs or even if you just need something to store at home if you are producing from home as well. All right, so before we head out, I appreciate you guys staying um, on with me for a full 45 minutes at this point. Um, but let's go ahead and visit some questions and then we will wrap everything up. All right, so um, what brand, is, okay, so we, we did visit that. Darren, um, yeah, so right there we do have the link. I'll share this on the screen if you guys need a direct link to the craft press there. If you go to transferexpress.com, it's actually one of the uh, banner images that you can click as well. So just by going to transferexpress.com, you can see it there as well. All right. Hi, Veronica. All right. And Janet recently purchased screen print transfer from Transfer Express, and the finished product was amazing. Highly recommend. 10 out of 10 stars from Janet. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah, so screen print transfer is super easy to work with. Definitely quality product. Um, very similar to the heat transfer vinyl if you're working with that as far as durability goes. You don't have to worry about it coming off in the wash after 6 to 12 washes. It lasts the full 50 wash cycle that we have tested, and it lasts the life of the garment. So very, very great product. Right. And Reva asks, um, please tell us how much a flexible application pad is. I want to say it's ballpark 25 to 30. Um, I could be totally way off base with that because uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but um, we'll have the teammates here live with me um, enter in the link to it so that you can visit it there. So Jackie asked a very specific question. So um, the only fun, and I may even be pronouncing that totally wrong, um, used in market bags. So uh, if anyone knows anything specific about this, if you could help me answer this question, that would be great. I'm not familiar with the fabric type that you are um, discussing. However, um, I do know that we have tested on polypropylene bags, which are recyclable, but recyclable bags um, that some grocery stores offer like Aldi. And we have successfully been able to apply our transfers to those polypropylene bags um, at 250 degrees. Uh, since these aren't a product that go through a wash cycle, they're just typically stored in a closet. Um, you can easily um, apply on those any really type of design at 250 degrees because it's not gonna burn it and you don't have to worry about it falling off either because it's not going through the wash cycle. <clears throat> All right, no dumb questions, but, um, okay, maybe this is for something else. No question, but to verify, I'll find it under all, yes. Should be able to find all of our lives there. All right, looks like our teammates are doing a really good job of staying current with the questions that you guys are asking right thirty four dollars for the application pad thank you very much for sharing that all right well it looks like i have all the questions answered i uh, revisited all those comments if i happen to miss something i'll be revisiting the broadcast later and kind of going through questions so feel free to ask more but i want to thank you guys so much for joining me i'll be live again on the regular channels that i go to uh every monday wednesday friday Stalls All Things Heat Printing and the Stall CV YouTube channel. But until then, I will see you back on the Impressions group next Monday at 10 a.m. And thanks again so much for joining me. Stay safe.